This video is part two of Elixir Gen Server fault recovery and performance. I think it would make a lot of sense to watch part one first before watching this. In part one, we've built a package delivery warehouse that always accepted packages, monitored package delivery, and made sure that none of the packages will be lost. In part two, we'll be focusing on performance. This was the structure of our warehouse application. We have a supervisor monitoring a receiver and the receiver process would be in charge of starting and monitoring the deliverators. In this part, we'll be adding a deliverator pool that will be in charge of all the deliverators. The receiver will still be communicating with both modules, the deliverator and the deliverator pool. The deliverator pool will be responsible for defining the max number of deliverators, providing available deliverators on request, and flagging them either idle or busy, and also removing ones that have crashed. So with that, let's get started. This is our deliverator pool module. It will be a supervised gen server process with the max number of deliverators set to 20. We'll have to add it to our main supervisor so it starts up with the rest of the application. The deliverator pool will hold state, which will be a map with a list of deliverators and the max. The list of deliverators will be a two element tuple with a deliverator process ID and its current state, either idle or busy. These four functions represent the public API of our deliverator pool module. Available deliverator will fetch an idle deliverator or start a new one if the current size of deliverators is less than the max. Flag busy and flag idle will just update the tuple of the deliverator inside of the list. And the remove deliverator will just remove it from the state. Each of these functions will have a corresponding synchronous callback. So with the boilerplate code out of the way, let's define what this function actually does. No need to declare comment inside of the doc. Having this logic defined up front will make it easier to reason about when actually writing the code. So the first step will be attempting to find an idle deliverator. We can use the match macro to do pattern matching inside of a list. So this will fetch the first element that matches this pattern. We'll proceed with the case statement based on the result. If the result is nil, that means we either maxed out or there's still room in the pool, but everyone is busy. Now, if we found a deliverator with a status, all we have to do is return the deliverator and the state. And if something else other than this, that means something unexpected happened here. So if we check the count of all the deliverators is greater than max, that means we've maxed out and should just return an error. Otherwise, we can start a new deliverator and add it to the pool. Adding the new deliverator to the state and then returning the message as expected. We have to make sure that this response variable is defined to prevent a compilation error. It would be good to quickly give this a try by checking the current state, calling the available deliverator function and seeing the process ID inside of the state. So it works. Next, let's write the code for the flag callback, which should handle both cases, busy and idle. We'll use the match macro again, and uh, notice the caret next to the deliverator variable, which means we will want to use the already assigned one. Then we'll replace the deliverator tuple inside of the list with the new flag and then just return the new state. Let's give this a try in the console by calling the flag deliverator busy function on that deliverator process ID. 
and then checking the state and seeing that it's been marked busy. So it looks like it works. And for the final callback, we just need to remove the deliberator from the list. Again, we'll use the match macro, which has been a huge time saver. So after we find the deliberator tuple, we just delete it from the list and then return the new state. And while testing from the console works great, there's nothing like having actual tests. So these tests will just be part of the repo and have examples for each one of those functions. Now that we've finished with our deliverator pool module, we need to update our receiver module to take advantage of the new functionality. We'll update the state to include things like batch size, package buffer, and delivered packages just so we can keep track of those. And of course, I would like to remove this receive and chunk function, which was always a horrible idea. Receive packages callback will need to be something entirely brand new. We'll split the packages by the defined batch size using enum.split. Then inside of a case statement, we'll request an available deliverator from the pool. It would be good to account for an error condition right away, so then we can buffer the rest of the packages. And uh, realize that it's a good idea to split the packages only once we have an available deliverator. This part of the code will be very similar to what we had before. We'll start monitoring the deliverator and assign a batch of packages to it. And once that's done, we can start delivering the packages. After that, we should mark that the deliverator is busy from inside the pool, which actually should happen before we start delivering the packages. The remaining packages, if there are any, can just be thrown right back into the receive packages method. Now, since delivered packages list is part of the state, we have to update the callback to be sure they're going to be returned here. We also have to update our crash handler to remove the crash deliverator from the pool. And we can call receive packages function on the fail packages just like before. Before when the deliverator finished successfully, we would just shut it down. Now there isn't a reason to do that. Let's update the deliverator module to just send a signal to the receiver module that it's now idle rather than killing itself. Inside of the receiver module, we'll just flag the deliverator idle through the deliverator pool. At this point, we can also process anything we have in the buffer. We can split up the next batch of packages and then pass those on to the receive packages method once again, updating the buffer with the remaining packages. So I think we're all set to try this out. Let's generate a random batch of 100 packages and launch it. We can see that the packages are being delivered and I think I will pause this here and skip right to the end. <laughs> And this is the point where we're done. The deliverator pool has two idle workers and let's see what's inside of the receiver state. And it looks like the receiver has all the packages in the delivered packages list. So that's good. And I think it would be very cool to confirm that our packages equal our list of delivered packages. And I think it's because they're not exactly delivered in the same order. So if we sort them by their IDs, Thing, they should all be the same and they are that's great so there we have it a super performant efficient fault tolerant package delivery system I hope you enjoyed this performance focused video and I hope in the future there won't be such a lag between part one and part two thank you very much for watching